Okay, um, yeah, I'm super happy to be here, actually, and thanks, Brad, for the invitation, and thanks, Anthropology, for, yeah, the organization of this event that I think is super incredible if you think about that. Even two years ago, speaking about computational design was, yeah, something very, very difficult to do, and right now it seems that everyone is talking about computational design and the approach about computational design in general. So, yeah, this is a kind of a schedule today that I'll kind of give you an explanation of what we are trying to do and what we are doing inside Punto Zero and what we are thinking about the future of Punto Zero. And so we'll pass between like uh, some kind of example that we have done in the past, we are doing in the present, and also some kind of thing uh, that we are, yeah, kind of approaching for the future. So yes, I'm one of the co-founders of Punto Zero. We are actually four co-founders, and we are based in Milan, um, Italy, yeah. And we, um, yeah, we born like two years and a half ago as a Punto Zero. And yeah, we do design for additive manufacturing. So for us, design for additive manufacturing is not just designing a part for like being reliable, reliable to the technology, being able to print, but is everything around the component that is pushing the limit of the technology. Because if you think about just the tech, there are kind of opportunities there, then there is also the part of the software, the tools that you're using for creating the things. And there is also a third part that we believe is the key aspect for like the, yeah, the, if you want to exploit the technology in general, and is the kind of approach, kind of uh, the engineering approach to designing things. So, yeah, this the combination of these three parts, these three opportunities, like for us, is open up a new kind of features, a new kind of component that we can create. So, for us, the goal in order to exploit the technology and exploit all these kind of possibilities is like doing, uh, going to production with that with manufacturing, and so. Yeah, what we are doing is actually we are like a design consultancy right now, but the goal is to try to understand what could be the future of doing this kind of work. So what, even what we think about, what we, um, like engineering, what can do like right now, but what is the future of the engineering world? So why we are like speaking about computational design? In order to understand what could be the future, in order to understand what could be like the next gen approach on engineering and creating things, for us is um, have to pass between the idea of computational design. And if you ask me, sometimes I don't say that we do design for additive manufacturing, but we create methodologies to create things. So, yeah, for doing this kind of things and uh, working in additive manufacturing, you need some kind of different approach, but different tools. And so this is why we are using a lot anthropology. And yeah, the reason is why we need computational power. We need complexity and complexity for good. I mean, just to exploit the technology and the potential, uh, but also speed and control and integration again, because yeah, that will be a key aspect. So taking in consideration this image, because we will show again later. So um, yeah, for the present, uh, some kind of part that I can explain for left to the right, there is kind of different readiness to the market, to the production. And the first one was a concept that we have developed in, in uh, collaboration with a company in Italy that is Nomic, doing kind of sport things, uh, goggles for yeah, sport. And so the objective here was like trying to find a way to eliminate six different parts of the mask and try to combine everything together just in one piece. So yeah, it's kind of working. Um, we are trying to find a solution for that. And then we pass to the medical insole. So just in a minute, I will explain better what could be the workflow, what we have done. And this is like a project that has almost two years and a half. And then finally, there is a part that is already on the market. And these are the pad inside the cask helmet. 
And if you go to a shop, so I really, yeah, it is really important to test the, the pad inside because if you fill that, you will not see the pad that is it's kind of honeycomb, but the structure is like a little bit tuned, and so you will feel that the compression will not be um, on perpendicular on the surface, and so it will be like squishing around. But yeah, the insole. Yeah, it's a medical insole. It's not just for like comfort. It's not just for spreading the load, don't having like big stress, but is for medical things. And so in medical things, we have to deal with different kind of postural problems and pain on the foot. So yeah, this is like, just imagine that we have done 29 different postural problems, 10 different sizes, three arch shape for the foot. That is a lot of work for a CAD software. And so what we have done, we are start from a CAD uh, part. And this is a part of, um, oh yeah, again, it's there. <laughs> um, this is a part of the workflow that we have created for creating this kind of custom workflow for just generating the part again and again. And everything is just one block. So you have just to select what is your problem, what is the combination of your problem, better to say, and what your size, and you have the different part. So the great things about that is that right now the um, starter company in Italy is really small, and so don't have like the ecosystem to create something in the shops for doing like the pressure map or doing the full uh, mass customization things. So what is incredible here is that we have created a workflow that at which point the, our customer is like ready to do this kind of things in the shop, we can just attach that and having like a, a kind of mass customization for uh, yeah, people in general. So these are like other three example and this is a part of yeah, thinking about the future. And these three, um, yeah, the three example has in mind like three different aspects. The first one that maybe you saw something on LinkedIn was like um, the idea is working on a new kind of approach even to the technology. Because is one of the opportunity working with additive manufacturing is that is the only technology that you can really engineer in things in the mesoscale. So yeah, when we think about the lattice structures, yeah, there are kind of different approach, like thinking as a material, thinking as a structures, or maybe thinking as a meta material. But we are in a meso world, even for the limitation of the technology. So this is uh, one of the aspects. Then, yeah, finally we are working on a, a it sync evolution that uh, is a, a case study that we have like almost two years ago with um, with Anto. And then there is like a new kind of approach that I will show you later. So speaking about the, uh, this kind of project that it starts as a joke, like just try to uh, creating and replicating inside Antop the butterfly egg. Yes, this is a butterfly egg. Um, we have like creating a kind of a playground for doing the right kind of researches in general. And so, we have used that for testing in, uh, in a micro scale, and that is the point of doing this kind of work, because right now, if there is a, a technologies that is capable to go down the major scale, you can really work on um, new kind of different levels, and this open up new kind of opportunities, and we are working that like kind of an art project, just to yeah, different things that are not just engineering things. And on the other aspect, on a new kind of project that will be on science. And I'm super excited about that, but yeah, let's see in the future if it works, will be something really, really cool. And so you saw a video that was like a render. This was the, in the beta phase of the new rendering graphic of NTOP5. And you see the axis resolution in, in the first step. And this is the new kind of adapter um, rendering uh, engine 
in Antop. And so you are able to work on different scale. So in the same model, you can, like working on the micro scale, you can work even in the nano, but right now, yeah, the technology maybe is not ready to do that. And also you can work in the macro scale. So at the same time, so you can work on different kind of level. And so if you think about a computational model that is taken into consideration, like different like dimension, different kind of aspect, we are dealing even with different kind of science and different kind of physics. And um, yeah, this still blow my mind, this kind of uh, random things. Um, yeah, and um, lastly, oh no, again, there is kind of also the next step of the exchanger. And that was a design that we have done in collaboration with um, a group of students uh, with the Polytechnic of Milan. We take into account how to create a new kind of uh, lattice structures that is, yeah, taking inspiration again from the shark skin and with the geroid. So, yeah, you can see that the complexity of this party is really, really tricky. And so if you want to really optimize every part, because this is not just the structures, it's a structure that is continually changing the inside the design space. So is the conformality of the design, the, conform, uh, the, the, um, the thickness of the, the structures in every point, you can control that. But if you want to optimize that, you need to kind of simulate in that. So Again, this is another part of the beta uh, test that we are doing, and we were in collaboration with CloudFluid doing that. So the great things working on this new kind of approach is that you are using your implicit model, and you are not meshing anything, and so you can directly uh, send the file to CloudFluid. And so what, is, what does it mean for us, this kind of things, is that if you Think about hours to doing simulation or more. Right now, it took like minutes. Um, I don't remember how much it is like just an iteration of that, but I would not say more than 15 minutes. Um, yeah, okay. Finally, this is um, a thought that is even complicating to explain in general. But if you think about the figure that I show in the first part of the, of the presentation, um, is a kind of joke or a kind of way to explain it to like kids, um, what are the characteristics of a part? And if you think a part, they have like four different um, principles or idea that are, are like the characteristic of the final part. So, um, if you think about the hardware, so the technology you're using, the material, the shape, and the engineering idea, the approach and the tools that are like making up all the things that made the final characteristic of your part. And so doing that and working with this different four field for me is also the same idea of creating methodologies and again, creating computational model. So, if we think just that this, circ this circle as the insole is a combination of different custom blocks and custom block combined together to create custom workflows, you can start thinking about creating different workflows that are combined together. And again, if we think about nature as in general, you can think about a tree and it about, I mean, the kind of a tree, if we put a tree right down there and we put on Venice Beach, um, they will be different. And this is kind of things because the, the, there is like different kind of boundary condition, different kind of input from the outside of the part. So this for us is also the idea of combining um, the interaction between parts. Okay, yeah, kind of making sense, I don't know. But um, this is a project that we are doing, and it seems like a nozzle, but it's not. And it's a part of a new pod, a lattice pod, you can call it, I don't know, uh, I call it like the meta pod. 
and it is a combination of different workloads. Mm -hmm. So one combination, the first workflow is like to creating the kind of holes that are inside this pod. And by the way, these are all created inside Antop, so all created by Bath. There is no CAD tools, there is no kind of this approach. So everything is blended together, and if you change the holes, you are also changing the channels, but you are also kind of figuring out what kind of property you have on your mesa structures. So the combination of this in the bottom right part, you see that is like a, the voxel of our pod. And so if you have a mathematical definition of this kind of things, you can doing the conformality of the kind of things or you can change parameters to also tweak the performances. And yeah, this is, if it makes sense, a kind of next gen approach for us. So yeah, that's, that's it and thank you.